So my mic wasn't working for the first couple of scenes of this video, so I decided to do some overdubbing. Just think of it like an old kung fu movie with those awesome voiceovers that they used to do. So this video is a four week update of when I planted my garden and I tried to get it done in one weekend, which didn't really work out. But I've had some things grow really well and I've really had some problems with some stuff. So I wanted to show you that and what I'm going to do about it. So we'll start out here in the front and then I'll show you the back. So up here in the front, the kale's doing really good. It seems to enjoy the half shade it gets and we've already started eating it. And I'm super happy with the bug net that I made for this as well. It's worked perfect and uh, I actually don't even have to lift it up when I water or anything like that. It just, uh, I can water right through it. Here's the wildflowers that Joanna planted. You can see that it's come up a lot since uh, we planted it obviously last time you saw it so it looks like a bunch of weeds right now but hopefully in about a month it's going to be a lot higher and there'll be lots of flowers blooming and right here in the front in the two buckets and the one over there joanna just put in some leaf lettuce yesterday so that's going to take a few weeks but uh, it's going to be delicious the strawberries though are doing awesome you can see all the red strawberries in there and uh, in this whole big area here we started out with six plants about three years ago I think it was this is probably going on year four and now we filled it all up And I'll tell you, there's nothing better than a strawberry right off the vine. I don't even know what it is they're selling in the stores. They look like strawberries, but they don't taste anything like it. It's just a huge burst of flavor. Okay, so here's my buckets and you can see my lettuce and stuff is doing really excellent. And then in the next row here, we've got the peppers doing really good. I've got some small ones there. Those are my green peppers, not growing quite as fast as my orange peppers are. So over here are my tomatoes and it's to the point where I'm going to have to put some stakes in right away just to hold them up. Uh, so they don't sag over and going through I'm taking some of these suckers out of here because I don't want them to get too bushy those ones are at the intersection here so you can kind of see the Y and this middle one is quite big and I'm actually going to snap it and doing that with the tomatoes can really increase the airflow that goes through there and just help guard against some of the disease and everything like that. So this part here wasn't actually here in the last video and these are the peas uh, and the peas are doing excellent. Everything came up really good and they're just gonna grow right up here. And over in the back under here is my broccoli and uh, that wasn't in during that last video but you can see here um, it's doing pretty good. It has been getting eaten a little bit. I've got uh, a number of plants in here. And so you can really see the importance of having the netting over things like your broccoli and your kale uh, because those little black flies, the flea beetles, will just congregate on your plants and just like devour them all. And so even with the netting, you can see that uh, some of the plants still got eaten. So some bugs did make it under there. Um, and here too but I'm hoping that uh, most of my plants are going to make it through and I can have some delicious broccoli okay so here are the pole beans that I planted you can see those are all doing pretty good but even so you know they're kind of starting to get eaten and I don't know if these are those uh, flea beetles or if there's some kind of other mite and stuff like that so um, it does look like they're starting to grow at a faster pace mostly and so hopefully those will make it through too. Over just outside the garden by the apple tree, I've got uh, some basil here that's going. I've got sage planted in this one here and I've got some cilantro uh, planted there. And so those are the things that were going good. Now I'll show you the things that aren't really working out. So the first one is the beans and you can see some of them made it and then some of them uh, got eaten and then some of them didn't even come up. So I had these full rows here planted all the way here and I had two rows here and then over on the other side of the peas I had another two rows. So that's something I'm going to actually replant tonight because I've still got plenty of time to grow beans and produce a lot. And so the next thing over in Carrot Cove here you'll see in these three rows here there's one there, one there, and one there, and there's not too many carrots. This row only has just a few carrots in it. This row has one way over here, and my last row 
also has one little guy. And so I can honestly say, I don't think I've ever had carrots not come up in that manner. You know, you get a few here and there, but for most of them not to come up is kind of strange. And so over here is the pole beans and right next to it is cucumber cluster. And the only problem is, is that each one of these sticks here are supposed to have a cucumber next to it growing by now. And there is nothing. And so it's kind of been a funny year that so many things just didn't really come up at all for no apparent reason. It happens sometimes where you get some bad seed or just some of them don't come up, but that many of them uh, is kind of strange. So I was talking to my father-in-law today and he has some of the same problem with some of his seeds too. And some of them were like with the carrots and I think he had some problems with the beans and some other stuff as well. And we came to the conclusion that um, our May was so hot like our May, we had so many days in the plus 30 degrees Celsius. And for where we are in Canada, gardening zone three is just strange for May. Like, you know, maybe you get into the 20s, low, like the teens and the 20s. And the end of May is when people start planting and our last frost date is usually June 6th. So that's when they recommend you start planting a lot of the stuff that can't handle the frost. So we figure that we've had so many hot days in a row when things were planted that those seeds just baked and ended up being no good. But that's kind of how gardening goes anyways. Some years things just work out and uh, like everything is magic and then other years, you know, you're struggling. I got to show you this. I'm super excited about this. It's one of the uh, projects I've had from last year and it's kind of working out. So this plant right here is my carrot that I left in the ground last year so it would go to seed. So I've never seen a carrot go to seed before, but this is what it's starting to look like. It's getting these kind of sunflowerish kind of uh, things on it, and that's all gonna be seed in there. And it's actually getting to a decent height too. This is probably about two and a half feet from the ground where I am right now. And so this ground is so dry, what I really need to do is just give it a little bit of a water before I start planting, uh, just to give it a little bit of dampness to start the seeds off. So in this row of beans here, you can see the only thing that's been growing is grass and some purslane there. How hard some of this clay is here like it's just so hard and that's no good for the, ugh, the beans to grow through either so the beans I've got all planted again uh, there so we'll see what happens I'm excited about how well the peas are doing though. The carrots on the other hand, well that's another story. I'm actually going to start the cucumbers in these solo cups and you can see my solo cups have holes on the bottom to drain and the reason I'm doing that is because in the garden there the bugs were getting at those and anything that came up uh, got eaten right away and then some of them didn't come up because perhaps they uh, baked in the sun. I just feel like I'm going to be able to regulate the growth and see what's happening better in here than in the garden. So the soil I'm using to start these seeds is uh, the same ones I grow my microgreens in and they're actually the same ones that I started all my seedlings in as well. Uh, so it should give them a good start. And 
so I'm not gonna leave them on the table because I'm afraid that they're gonna get baked in the sun. So I'm actually just gonna throw them right down here. And so there you can see, they're nice and shaded from the sun. Uh, so they should do just fine. Okay, so I just saw something over here in the garden. Turns out I have a stray pea sitting right there. And if you look down the line of peas here, I got a little opening right there. And so that's it today. Uh, it's after nine o'clock already, so it's time for me to do the cleanup and everything like that, you know, the fun part. So I'd love it if you let me know in the comments if you're liking these videos and what you like about them and if you want to see more of them and if you do want to see more of them make sure you subscribe to the channel to see the next uh, garden update that I'm gonna do and uh, remember the most important thing folks oh there's Poppy hey Poppy come here as I was saying remember the most important thing folks take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next video